Hi guys, Mark here, and in this video we're going to look at solution to day seven of the advent of code challenge in C sharp and F sharp. Um, and we've got a lot to talk about today, so let's get straight to it. Okay, so the challenge for day seven is all about constructing an electronic circuit. And if we look down a little bit further, we can see that the instructions for how you set up this circuit are given like this. We have various wires in the, in the circuit, which have all got a name, X, Y, D, E, and so on. And we can either connect a constant value to those wires, or we can connect them to logic gates. So wires X and Y are connected to an AND gate, and the output is connected to D. And X and Y are also connected to an OR gate, and the output is connected to E. And so there's a few other types of gates. There's left shifts and right shifts and bitwise knots. So this gives us an opportunity to use some of our bitwise uh, arithmetic operators in C sharp and F sharp. Um, one thing you do have to be careful of is that these are unsigned shorts. Um, so you can't have negative numbers here. Um, and I missed that the first time I attempted to do this. But let's go and have a look and see how I try to solve this in C sharp first of all. So I decided I was going to have a dictionary of string to U short. So for each wire, um, I would store the value at that wire. And we'd go through each of the instructions, calculating what the result of that instruction was and saving it in the dictionary. And so I made these little helper functions um, for and, we evaluate the um, the two inputs and we bitwise and them together and for or we bitwise all them together and what this little eval function is doing is it's saying it might be the input to the AND gate or whatever might be um, a numeric literal in which case we just parse it or it might be the value of another wire and if so we look it up in our dictionary and I made a little helper function that selects the right one of these evaluation functions to use given the command. So all of that is fairly straightforward and the way that I actually apply this is I take my instructions and here I'm starting with the test instructions from the website and I split them on space, I store in an anonymous object the target, that's the the last part of the instruction, which wire we're connecting this to, the action, which is the function we're going to run to calculate the value of that wire, and also all of the parameters. So this is just all of the parts of the instructions um, broken up into an array. And then I use an aggregate. An aggregate lets us work our way through any enumeration, and we have an accumulator object, which in our case is the dictionary, and we apply every item in the sequence to that accumulator. So what I do is for every item in the sequence, I run the action on it to work out what the value of that wire is based on the parameters um, in the instruction. And then we store that in our accumulator dictionary. And so when I ran this, I, and I've got an order by at the end here just to make it easier to check the answers, when I ran this on the test input, um, everything looked exactly right. I got the right answers for all of them. So I was feeling very confident um, that I'd pretty much solved uh, day seven's challenge. And so I swapped out the test instructions for my day seven input. And my input, let's just show you that, looks a bit like this. There's a lot of instructions. This is a complicated circuit we're setting up. And when I ran it, I got a key not found exception. And that's because some of the instructions were depending on the values of wires that we hadn't yet calculated. And so this gave me a bit of a headache. How could I make sure that we solved this in the right order? Um, and I started to think about whether I could sort the commands in some clever way to make sure that um, we were only working out commands that we already knew the values of all the inputs for. And I'm sure there probably is some clever algorithm that you could use. But I did eventually work out a way to do this, and this is quite hacky. 
It's a little bit ugly. You don't have to like it, but let me show you what it is. I made a link extension method called retrying aggregate. And it's exactly the same as aggregate. It works through every element in the sequence, applying a function to an accumulator for each element. But if it throws an exception, it saves that value in the sequence and tries it again later. So let's have a look at how I implemented that, um, that extension method. So here's retrying aggregate. It takes an accumulator and a source sequence. So here's my source sequence, my accumulator called seed, and then my selector or the function that I'm going to apply you to the source and to a value from the source and the current value of the accumulator for each element in the sequence. And the way I've done this, to get me started, I copy the entire input sequence into a queue. And while that queue has got anything in it, I dequeue an element from it, I try to run the selector function. If I succeed, that's fine. In fact, I don't need to yield anything here. If I don't succeed, and I'm here, I'm specifically capture, catching a key not found exception, although of course you could make this extension method even more generic and pass that in as an extra type parameter. If we catch the key not found exception, then I'm just gonna re-enqueue this command to be run later. And so this is a nice, um, I say nice, it is really very hacky, but it does solve the problem. And when we run this, we're able to work out not just the value of A, but it works at the value of every single Y in my entire circuit. Now, actually, I didn't immediately go to this solution. I did take a completely different approach um, after my initial efforts had failed. And I decided that what I was going to do instead was have a dictionary of string to string arrays. or That's basically a, for each wire, store the parts of the instructions to calculate that. And then I was going to go through, I was going to basically start from A and just recursively follow the instructions to work out what the value of A is. And so here, this eval input function is a recursive function. And um, this worked, although this wasn't without its problems, because you could get stuck in an infinite loop if you weren't careful. So once you would calculated the value of any input, you needed to memoize it. That is to save the value that you've worked out for that input. And so here you can see, after I've worked out the value for an input with these recursive calls, which might call back into eval input, um, once I've got the value, I store it into my dictionary. Um, and this also worked, um, this is perhaps a bit more of a direct route because we're not trying to work out the value of every wire in the entire circuit. We're only interested in A. Uh, by the way, there was a part B to this problem. Part B was not too hard to do if you'd solved part A. Basically, you were just told that um, the answer you got to part A of the problem was now the input to wire B. And so simply, I over overrode the instruction for wire B with a new instruction that just set it to a hard-coded value. So that was nice and easy to do. And so that's C sharp. Let's just have a quick look at how I tackled this in F sharp. Now with F sharp, I really wanted to see if I could do something that was a bit more idiomatic F sharp. And one of my thoughts was maybe I could use a parser. Uh, I didn't really go for regular expressions uh, today. I'm sure regular expressions can be used, but really this is the ideal use case for a parser. Unfortunately, although I know a little bit about F parsec, I wasn't confident enough in my skills in it to actually write a proper parser for these instructions. However, I did create some types. So an argument is either a constant or another wire. And then my actions or operations, we could call them, AND gates have two arguments, um, but NOT and assign just have one argument. 
And then a command is an action with a string representing the wire that this command is for. And so then I made a number of little helper functions and really these are, are very similar to what I had in C sharp, the ability to parse an argument. So it might be a letter, in which case it's a wire. Otherwise it's a constant and we parse it to a uint 16. And we've got some code here that parses a command as well. And so when we've got a string command, we split it into its parts, we parse the arguments and we work out um, which of the various operations or actions this is. And I've made a, um, a tuple of which action to run and the last part of each command is of course the wire that we're connecting it to. And so the approach I ended up taking in F sharp was actually quite equivalent to the first approach I showed you in C sharp with this retrying aggregate, although I made it less ugly. I made it so it didn't catch exceptions, but worked out whether it could um, apply that command yet or not. And so the way I did this was we can tell whether we can evaluate any given argument if it's either a constant, then we can evaluate it, or if it's a wire, then we've got a key, we've got a value calculated for that wire already. And so we can know whether we can evaluate an action based on whether we can evaluate all of the arguments for that action. And you can see here, there's a nice thing about the match construct in F sharp, where I can avoid quite a bit of duplicated code by batching together four cases here that have two arguments and the two cases that have one argument there. So we can either evaluate it or we can't. And this function, if we can't evaluate it, returns a none. Um, so it's an option type, which is a nice feature of F sharp. If we can evaluate it, then we'll work it out there and then and return sum with the result. And again, we're taking advantage of the match syntax in F sharp. The only slightly unusual thing really here is these strange bitwise operators. Because F sharp makes use of a number of uh, operators like two forward arrows kind of composes functions, then they've had to use three forward arrows for right shift and three ampersands for bitwise and and so on. But apart from that, it's fairly straightforward. So then I needed to make my F sharp version of the retrying aggregate and I called it defer aggregate. So it takes the commands as in C sharp, we in initially create a queue and we just put all of the commands straight into that queue to start us off. And we create our dictionary of the values that we've calculated. And then while that queue has got anything in it, we'll dequeue a command, we'll evaluate it and if we got some value, which means we could evaluate it, we'll store it in the state. And if there was no value, if it was none, we couldn't evaluate it yet, we'll just enqueue it to be evaluated later on. And so finally, all we needed to do um, to actually solve this was take the um, instructions, map them into our command parser, and then pass that into defer aggregate. And what we get out of that is just a dictionary, so we can index that on A to find out the value of A. And to solve part B, um, all I did with part B was I switched out the instruction for wire B in the original instructions and replaced it with an instruction that was hard coded. And so there we have uh, an F sharp version. Now I did take a quick look on the subreddit um, to see how some other people had solved this after I'd come up with my solutions. And as usual, there are some really great creative and interesting solutions. Um, one of the solutions was quite similar to this, um, but done in Python and was done very nice and succinctly um, and probably worth checking that out. Um, if you want to have a look at perhaps a more succinct way of solving the problem using this technique. But anyway, hope you enjoyed that. As usual, 
I would love to hear any suggestions you have for how I could and should have improved what I've done and um, hopefully we'll see you tomorrow for day eight.